Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we have been looking at uh, uh, these different models of uh, combining uh, chemical and thermal processes uh, like the fixed mass reactors of constant pressure and constant volume and then um, we looked at the uh, uh, open flow systems of uh, well stirred reactor and plug flow reactor. The question is what can we do with these okay. So many times we can actually use these to um, solve complicated problems in more simplistic manner. But something that is quite interesting is you could also actually use combinations of these models uh, to uh, set up like a network that uh, uh, deals with a more complicated system. So one thing is to take one system and try to simplify it into one of these but another, another way is to actually put a bunch of these together in a network that will mimic a more complicated system. So uh, the model reactors can be used in a network so for example So we have uh, let us say a gas turbine take a gas turbine combustor. So we know that for example you now have a, a, a gas turbine um, outer casing that goes like this and then uh, you now have a uh, fuel inlet that comes in and then you now have a swirler. Uh, so you have an atomizer here you have a swirler and then you, you, you have a liner and uh, so you have some swirl cup and so on. So you now have the primary air that goes through this the secondary air goes like this and uh, this is fuel this is air and uh, then you have so this liner having these uh, uh, holes for secondary air to come in. So you now have a, a primary combustion zone here and a secondary combustion zone here. So this is of actually different uh, fuel air ratios. So you now have like a close to stoichiometric mixture over here and then you now have some air that is coming in further into this and um, you now have a more fuel lean condition of combustion there and then you, you have a further uh, uh, situation of dilution because you now have to have the uh, turbine blades withstand the temperature at the outlet so you need to have the turbine entry temperature reached at a particular value and not higher than that therefore you have these called dilution holes right. So this is this is like a, a flow that is uh, a diluted flow okay uh, diluted not just in not, not in terms of air but also in terms of temperature that means you are, you are relatively cooling this gas. So this is the uh, primary uh, combustion zone, secondary combustion zone and this is the dilution zone. So how do you deal with this in, in a this is actually a highly complicated system in terms of the fluid mechanics that is involved here the chemistry the combustion all those things uh, the multi-phase flow all the all the stuff that happens here it is a highly complicated situation. So how do you try to use these simplified model reactors that we have had like uh, the double the well star this is obviously an open flow system so we have to actually choose uh, something like the WSR and the PFR uh, that we have seen before uh, so what you can actually think about is you now treat the uh, primary combustion zone as a WSR1 and then 
what happens is, uh, so you now have a fuel line and a air line uh, that are feeding into these. So you now have a inlet from the air and the fuel right and uh, the exhaust of the WSR1 gets into the gets into another WSR right that can be used to simulate the secondary combustion zone and you now have this airline can keep going you now take additional air in here and then the output of that gets into well it depends on whether you want to treat this as a PFR or so on but typically you do not have too much combustion going on and you are, you are now at the tail end of the combustor. So you could actually more easily treat this as a PFR and you can even keep track of how things evolve in space because PFR allows you to do that in a one dimensional manner right. So you could, you could uh, try to model this as a PFR with uh, additional air and then you now have this coming out right. In case you are thinking of uh, having a, a additional fuel that is participating in the secondary combustion because if you now have incomplete combustion in the primary zone uh, and it is not just the combustion products of the primary zone that feeds into the um, secondary zone but additional fuel you could have this as well just to just to be sure that uh, you are you're using all the fuel that is uh, in there in the inside the combustor. So you see that this is now like a network of uh, these these model uh, reactors in, in uh, tandem one after the other and also using what the output of one as an input of the other and so on um, and uh, taking air from a, a airline and fuel from the fuel line for these different parts uh, differently. And then finally you now get this, these are the two inputs and uh, that is the output there is a there are temperatures for these uh, so that means you have a enthalpy for this and therefore correspondingly you will get the enthalpy for that and so on. So something of this sort can be done. So I would like to conclude the, the, the section on uh, these model reactors which combine chemical and uh, thermal processes without getting too much into flow details except for the little detail that we did for the PFR and uh, without getting into any mixing at all okay and, and justify uh, trying to avoid mixing uh, and, and uh, deal with quite complicated situations in a simplistic manner. But then we cannot avoid mixing completely so we have to step into getting into mixing uh, as we go along so we, we let us now start doing the, the real combustion, real combustion now involves you uh, to be dealing with convection, uh, con diffusion and reaction all three together. So we, we, have, we have so far been looking at chemical reactions and we did not really to do, do too much of uh, convection or flow we would not do that much but we will have to ultimately uh, get into some amount of mixing that we need to uh, look at so that is what we, we would want to do. So we want to now look at some mass transfer definitions. This is actually continuing from the set of definitions we had on mass concentration of species and molar concentration of species and um, mass fractions and molar fractions so we, we mole fractions we, we had made these uh, definitions earlier on but now we have to actually get into a conceptual idea here. So the, the first definition that I would like to make is again we will have two parts one is the mass averaged velocity of the mixture let us suppose you use the, velo the, the, the uh, symbol v vector small v vector for the velocity of the mixture this would be uh, defined as i equals 1 to n sigma rho i v i vector divided by 
sigma i equals 1 to n rho i what sigma i equals 1 to n rho i do you remember from past that is just the density of the mixture itself okay the density of the mixture itself is nothing but the sum of all the individual densities of, of, of species because the density is nothing but mass per unit volume so per unit volume of a mixture let us suppose that we have air around us and then air is a mixture of uh, let us say nitrogen oxygen and a few other things in, in, in trace so you just pick a unit volume of this then you start counting the mass the amount of mass of nitrogen amount of mass of oxygen and so on in, in this amount the mass of nitrogen per unit volume is the density of nitrogen the mass of uh, oxygen per unit volume is density of oxygen and so on you know add up all the mass that is there in that that is the mass of all the all the species there per unit volume is the density of the mixture so it is simply adding up all these so this is not this is nothing but rho so you now begin to see that if you do not have a subscript right it now may it now belongs to the mixture if it has a subscript then it belongs to a species all right first of all and then how does it work the density is summation of all the individual densities but the velocity is like an average it is a mass weighted average why is it why, why am I saying mass weighted because this is actually a mass averaged velocity right so I could have I could have simply said this is mass of individual species times its velocity per unit volume divided by mass of individual species per unit volume so I could have had like per unit volume on both sides so you got the density from the mass so it is essentially a mass weighted average or velocity of the mixture what does this mean is if you now have a mixture of gases what we are trying and then each of these each of these species is actually trying to go with its own velocity all right and and since I am showing my thumbs that 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 is to actually indicate the direction that means you now have the, the a species a goes this way a species b goes this way and so on at this particular location and time right out of this we are now trying to picture how the mixture is going to go on the whole without worrying about what the individual species are doing so how do you deduce how this mixture is going to go as a whole we now try to average the velocities weighted by their mass that means if you have a very small amount of mass of a particular species it does not really count too much for the mixtures velocity let us say you have a very small amount of mass going very fast okay you are still going to have the mixture on the whole going slower because lots of other things which are that are present in a more greater abundance are going slower right so as a, as a mixture it is not going to go just as fast as this very small component right so this is what we are saying we could have also done this instead of having a mass average what else could we have done mole moles right so we can use moles so the molar average velocity mixture we now call this small v star vector that is um, given by sigma i equals 1 to n c i v i vector divided by i equals sigma i equals 1 to n c i of course this is also the same as c which is the concentration of the mixture the molar concentration of the mixture because it is also going through the same kind of arithmetic which is just summing over all the number of moles of all the species together per unit volume all right so what is happening here is the mixture actually is a mixture traveling at a velocity v or is it traveling at a velocity v star both are not same okay 
the C i's and the rho i's are not exactly the same how are they related there is a molecular weight coming into picture okay so they would actually be the same if your molecular weights of all the species were the same but that's that's not necessarily true you could have hydrogen on one hand which has a very low molecular weight when compared to let's say uh, butane okay or carbon dioxide all these things have much higher molecular weights so these are not necessarily the same the question then is what is exactly the mixture doing is it going at this speed or is it that speed it depends on what you want how you how you want to deduce the mixture speed so the mixture speed is not an absolute quantity it is the species velocity that is that is more absolute the mixture velocity depends on the way we want to evaluate the mixture velocity right it's, it's kind of like saying uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a democracy you, you have a lot of people who have to get together to vote and select the leader okay so if, if they now select the president in one country or the prime minister in the other country who is bigger the president or the prime minister no it doesn't matter the people are the ones that are the most important <laughs> that's what the democracy is all about right so here it's a species velocity that, that, that is really the absolute how you want to actually deduce the mixture velocity is up to you right this is now going to be very important the next step that we make right so the next thing that we want to do is a we now define a mass diffusion velocity of species i species i okay now this is actually for a individual species and the way we want to define this is capital V i vector is equal to small v i vector minus small v vector and let me just complete the next step B and then we will talk about this molar diffusion velocity of species I is now capital V i star is equal to V i vector minus V star vector you see here V i's are the same because they are absolute they are always there as they are okay depending upon whether you are subtracting the mass averaged velocity of the mixture or the molar averaged velocity of the mixture you now get apparent velocities of the individual species which are capital V or capital V star and why do we say apparent what is the going on it is like saying this is where we have to really listen okay it is like saying you now have a mixture let's say here okay right there in that picture okay so you are now into your combustor you are now peeping into your combustor and then you are finding a lot of species going hither and thither right you want to now try to deal with this like a mixture so you now choose to pick a mixture velocity that is defined either this way or that way all right and then you now want to tag this mixture velocity to the mixture in reality all the species are going this way and that way and then you got a mixture velocity out of this that is going that is saying that the mixture is going like this and then you go along with it that means these velocities are in the mixed to fixed coordinate system we are essentially transforming our coordinates if you were in a lab fixed coordinate system where you had your combustor running and then you saw your species going this way and that way and you could deduce a mixture velocity for it 
as whatever it is for the mixture that is going in whichever way you want it is all in the lab fixed coordinate system but now you decide to travel with the mixture when you are travelling with the mixture at the speed that you have determined for the mixture in a certain way right you begin to see that the species are going this way and that way it is not all going like this okay because you are going along okay it is going like that it is even going backwards right because you subtracted out that mixture velocity right so it can now this is vector vector addition this is vector algebra okay so you are looking at vectors so from your mixture fixed coordinate system it looks like as if the mixture is stationary right that is very good because forget about the combustor forget about aerospace engineering and all those things we will now take a box okay keep the mixture on our desk <laughs> table it is not going to go anywhere let the mixture mix right because the mixture is not going anywhere we are going with the mixture anyway right so while we are going with the mixture we are now in a mixture fixed coordinate system so the mixture is now on the table you do not need to you do not need to go anywhere so whatever you are going to be looking at for the species velocity if the mixture were not moving is what you are going to see with this or this right and that is how we would have actually tried to make experiments to try to find out what else is the mixture is doing other than going I am sorry what else is the species doing other than going with the rest of the mixture. If you now have air in this room I suppose we do <laughs> okay and it is a mixture it is a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen predominantly and then you want to now try to start looking at what the oxygen molecule is doing okay we do not really bother about things at the molecular level because we want to stick to a continuum framework. So at a particular point if you want to look at what is oxygen doing what is oxygen species velocity that is actually a bunch of molecules millions of oxygen molecules at this particular point collectively what are they doing when compared to the rest of the mixture the rest of the mixture is mostly nitrogen. So you now ask what is the nitrogen doing okay we will find that most of them most of the time in what we are thinking about the oxygen is pretty much going to do the same thing as what the nitrogen is going to do because it is all completely mixed when it is completely mixed it is now acting as if it is one species air then that means the species are going to do the same thing that means they are just going to go as one single species which is the mixture right. So what do we understand if a species is going to do something other than going with the rest of the mixture then it is not completely mixed. right and to quantify what it does other than go with the rest of the mixture is what you have these velocities for right. So this is a and this is very important this is fundamental uh, to any, anything that you do with mixing yeah so this is this is in the now mixture fixed coordinate system. right this is lab fixed coordinate system so in general let us just make this point very clear in general small v and small v star okay and capital V i and capital V i star are different or 
or different for species in a mixture with dissimilar molecular weights okay and this is going to come to haunt us after some time yeah so sometimes you will find combustion uh, scientists analysts are making these seemingly reckless assumptions like equal molecular weights for all species what is a big deal I mean can't you even deal with species that are of two different molecular weights the answer is yeah but we have lots of other equations to solve so can we get, get some reprieve here we will find okay. So what do we do with this we can now uh, define mass fluxes we are, we are now stepping up uh, our approach towards something particular so of course we know that mass flux uh, of species I is uh, m dot vector I equals rho I V I okay and so of course we have an A and a B molar flux of uh, species I let us call this N I dot vector equals C I V I V I that is it V I is uh, absolute so this is in the lap fixed coordinate system right it's something that we are familiar with mass flux is nothing but density times velocity okay similarly molar flux is nothing but concentration times velocity all right then we should now be able to write for a relative mass flux relative mass flux or diffusion mass flux diffusion mass flux of species i is j i vector is equal to rho i capital V i which is rho i V i minus V right and uh, B go through the same thing replace the word mass by molar and then we will see how the symbols change a little bit relative molar flux or diffusion molar flux of species I how does it change J I star is equal to rho I I am sorry um, C I capital V I star vector that is equal to C I V I vector minus V star vector right and obviously this is in the mixture fixed coordinate system right that is in the mixture fixed coordinate system what have we done the first thing that we have done is for the first time in our lives we have used the word diffusion okay welcome to the confusion the moment you have diffusion you are going to get into trouble <laughs> okay and, and uh, that is what that is what we will we will see for from now on and so obviously things get more interesting exciting and stuff <laughs> right whatever we have been doing so far has been boring and then 
what you are saying is if you are now thinking about mass flux let us actually think about in a mixture fixed coordinate system right. So in a mixture fixed coordinate system if I were to move with the mixture right what is the mass flux of my species that is going here and there it is all not going in together in, in one direction because I am going along then I am subtracting that so you could now also have some um, mass flux or molar flux depending upon how you want to look at it go backwards forwards either this way that way and so on right. So why are we interested in this flux why could not we have just stopped with velocities right that is because that is how fixed law comes about okay. So we now have to have what is called as fixed law we are now ready to look at fixed law. Adolf Fick around 1858 stated that da star is equal to minus c dab gradient xa for a binary mixture of uh, species A and B the plural of species is species okay so we say species we, we are talking about individual species I we now talk about two species A and B all right okay we got it now it is very likely that Fick exactly did not say it in a mathematical way but we are now geared up to state Fick's law in a mathematical way right and because we have now come from a mass averaged and molar averaged velocity all the way to a relative molar diffu molar flux or a diffusion molar flux J i star for a particular species right what did basically what did he say he found that the relative molar flux or the diffusion molar flux of a particular species is directly proportional to its mole fraction it is basically he said it is directly proportional to its concentration gradient. When would you have a concentration gradient if you now had a variation in the concentration in space okay that means you have more of it here more of a particular species here less of a particular species there then you now have a variation and a spatial variation would mean that you now have a gradient and that is what is actually driving the species to come from there to here right that simply means that you do not have a mixture in which all the species are uniformly mixed. If you had all the species uniformly mixed like we think air is around us at the moment okay then we would not have any concentration gradients of oxygen here versus here versus here and so you do not have any gradients that, that means oxygen does not rush this way while nitrogen is rushing somewhere else or the mixture is going somewhere else alright. Of course then the oxygen rushing this way counts for the mixture going somewhere anyway okay so in a lab fixed coordinate system it will look like the oxygen is going like that but it does not do that other besides nitrogen going somewhere else they are all going together because you do not have any concentration gradients that means the mixing is perfect it is only when you do not have a perfect mixing right you have to worry about concentration gradients and when you have concentration gradients we now have the species go from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until the concentration gradient vanishes and then the species does not go anywhere it is all living happily ever after right. So it is kind of like Robin Hood okay take the money from here from the rich give it to the poor until all of us are living happily ever after. Okay, that is what transport processes always do okay. So the DAB 
is a binary diffusion coefficient that appears as a constant constant of proportionality between the diffusion molar flux and the concentration gradient right and this is a transport transport property this is a mass transport property correspondingly the momentum transport property is your kinematic viscosity and the 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 uh, energy transport property is your thermal diffusivity all of them actually have the same units okay in SI it is meter squared per second right and what do they do their job is to take mass of a particular species from a place where it is more and put it in a place where it is less take momentum from a place where it is more that is what that is what viscosity does okay so momentum from a place where it is more and put it in a place where it is less take heat from a place where it is more and put it where it is less that is heat conduction so that is what conduction means. So this is like transport phenomena out of which we are essentially looking at only one part which is the species mixing in a mixture right. We have to look at something a little bit more carefully we are now saying it is a binary mixture that means we are now looking at a mixture which has only two species. How does it matter I mean how does it work out for, for does, does, does it does it make sense we are, we are doing combustion and do we deal with mixtures that have only two species what combustion means you have to have reactions right. So for reactions to happen you need to have two reactants yeah sure so we have two and then they will mix but what about products if, if two reactants are required to form a third product you do not have a binary mixture anymore <laughs> you see so we are out fic is not good enough for us right away unless you had like one of them as a reactant the other one as a product okay that is like a recombination reaction you now had a molecule that that just look let us say you, you it was subjected to heat from the flame let us say okay and then it desired to reorganize itself and become another species okay like 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 a, a bunch of atoms in one corner of the molecule st started uh, getting excited dissociate and then go around and then form uh, and then go back and uh, course you now find that you will now have radicals and all that stuff right because this is all got dissociated and so on so it is not a <laughs> so binary species is something that we do not really come across typically but you could if you, if you if you want to simplify your situation you say A equals B is my global reaction I will deal with only two species and so on okay you could do that. But Fick did not really have that much of a complication in, in his mind okay he was only looking at a isothermal um, maybe non-reactive okay mixture of two liquids as a matter of fact is what he was doing right. So it is, it is an incompressible situation and because I as I said J star is a, is a, is a mixture fixed coordinate system you did not have to worry about a mixture in motion in a lab fixed coordinate system you could think about a mixture that is right in front of you sitting there mixing as you speak or observe okay and then you can come up with this law and therefore the C is the concentration of the mixture just like in an incompressible flow you say the density is constant you say the concentration is constant for the mixture as a whole can be pulled out of the gradient and then you now have a mole fraction gradient rather than a concentration gradient right. So this is the simplistic setting in which Fick really came up with this law okay and you could of course um, so we, 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 we have a of course we could, we could write in terms of uh, in terms of diffusion mass flux let us say we are not chemists so we are not used to dealing with things in terms of molar flux we are, we are more used to things in, in mass flux so, uh, so, so let us say diffusion mass flux um, Ja is equal to minus rho dAB it is the same dAB as, as before you now have a mass fraction gradient rather than a mole fraction gradient and a density instead of concentration 
for the constant for the coefficient j a star becomes j a vector right. So what is d a b d a b d a b is the binary diffusion coefficient binary diffusion coefficient for a pair of species a and b. So the binary diffusion coefficient is actually defined always regardless of how many species are there in your mixture okay you can still think about a binary diffusion coefficient that is defined for a pair of species in that mixture you are now beginning to think a little bit more okay is it possible for us to apply this to a, a mixture which has more than two species maybe okay when what would DAB be yes you can still use the DAB that is a binary diffusion coefficient for a pair of species so it is always valid for a pair of species but what if I have a mixture of B and A instead of A and B will I have a DBA that is different from DAB huh is it like a, uh, a, a tensor or something like that no right so DB DAB is equal to DBA that is because we are now in a mixture fixed coordinate system right. So if and this is very important okay because we are in a mixture fixed coordinate system effectively what it means is if species A is mixing into species B then correspondingly species B is mixing into species A just as well. So it is like saying if you now had hydrogen and oxygen and you think that hydrogen is a much lighter gas when compared to oxygen so you now had a bunch of hydrogen over here and, and then a bunch of oxygen over here in a box with a diaphragm in the middle and then you now have like have a very magic wand that makes this diaphragm disappear at t equal to 0 and you start looking at this at t greater than 0 okay you expect that all the hydrogen is going to rush into the oxygen the oxygen just sitting like that huh and then you say all the hydrogen was the one that did the job of mixing oxygen did not do the damn thing no the oxygen is going to say yeah of course I was mixing. right it is going to mix just as well into the hydrogen as hydrogen mixes into oxygen because from the oxygen's point of view the hydrogen it is doing, it's doing its job you see this is very very important okay in, 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 a, in, a, in a binary mixture there is nothing like this species is mixing more than that species. Why are we doing this? Why do we need the fixed law? The fixed law states that the moral diffusion flux, okay, or the mass diffusion flux, are directly proportional to a concentration gradient in terms of either a mole fraction gradient or a mass fraction gradient. Why did we need it? Why did we need FIC? Why are we talking about it? Right? What are we achieving? Any guesses? If you are, if you think a little bit more, okay, I told you that these are, these are this is a transport process and then there are like there are correspond this is a mass transport okay so it is correspondingly momentum transport and energy transport and you now had viscosity and conductivity come up in those as transport properties what do they connect okay. So if this is like a proportionality uh, constant between a mass flux and a concentration gradient what was the viscosity a it was it was viscosity a proportionality constant of anything it was a proportionality constant that was relating shear stress 
to velocity gradient okay keep in mind velocity is a vector a gradient of velocity could be a tensor and therefore you have an additional problem in momentum transport of dealing with a gradient of a velocity that means your shear stress could be a tensor and so on okay but whereas here this is a vector gradient of a scalar that is a vector okay but when you get back to energy transport things are back to normal we are now looking at the thermal conductivity showing up as a proportionality constant of heat flux uh, that is relating heat flux to a temperature gradient right temperature is a scalar gradient of temperature is a vector heat flux is a vector right so what is going on we are always trying to relate some of these quantities like diffusion mass flux or shear stress or heat flux to gradients spatial gradients in concentration or velocity or temperature these are all quantities that I can measure I can stick a probe and get my concentration velocity or temperature these are things that are actually showing up in my equations you have a control volume there is a heat that is coming in from the surface or mass that is coming in across the surface control surface and so on and I do not know how would I know I can only measure concentrations in two places to find out if this is more than that then it is that you have a mass flux uh, I now measure temperature at two places if this is more than that I now have a heat flux right. So in our system of equations we would like to keep the unknowns as essentially our primitive variables right but you now have these heat fluxes mass fluxes and shear stress coming in as extra items along the control surface like for example shear stress is essentially a surface force it is coming through a surface force okay to drive the momentum heat flux by conduction is trying to influence the enthalpy change right similarly mass flux by diffusion is going to now change your mass balance your continuity equation right and we would like to relate these to things that we want to keep us keep us our primary unknowns and we do not want to deal with any additional unknowns. So this equation and it is like for momentum transport and energy transport are constitutive relationships that connect a secondary unknown to a primary unknown. Now plug this in an equation which treats x a as it is unknown you are safe you are not reckoning additional unknowns you see so this is very very important to us unfortunately we will be groping to see how to deal with this for a truly multi component system where you have a mixture of more than two species next class. Mm -hmm.